Hello minions and welcome to another episode of Wheezy's Weapon Tactics for Modern Warfare. Uh, in this video we are going to go ahead and walk through the different loadout recommendations that I have for you for using the FAL. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. I'm, I'm driving this live so we'll just talk as we go. Um, I've set up a few uh, pre-made classes here and we'll kind of walk through and, and discuss them as we go. Those of you who've been around a while you know that I have pretty much a standard setup of, of different creative classes that I run based on the situation and for those of you watching the weapon tactics videos you may notice that I primarily run three classes uh, when testing out a weapon assault objective and stealth and we'll walk through those um, so for the assault class which we would use mostly for slayer game modes where killing is more important than say playing an objective as we have in the objective game mode um, we're focusing on the ability to kill the enemy as effectively as possible. Um, one thing that I will note up front with how I've done this, I've created a couple of extra classes as well. For the primary creative classes, I have excluded the burst attachment because you unlock it really late on in the unlock tree. I don't know if it even lists in here. Um, it doesn't say. I'm, I'm in the local game mode, so it's not really going to tell me the unlocks, but it's really late in the unlock tree that you get the burst. So. These first three classes are set up without using the burst attachment, um, and then I'll, I'll cover that in the last one. So for assault, I've got my setup called Plinker because it's a semi-automatic. So we're running the Compensator, the XRK Marksman Barrel, the Ranger Foregrip, Rubberized Grip Tape, and the Mini Reflex. And in general, what we're trying to do with the attachments for the FAL is to compensate for the weaknesses. Now the strengths of the FAL are that it has high power, um, and long range so the the weaknesses are that it's got an extremely low rate of fire and extremely high recoil so what we're trying to do is balance out the strengths and the weaknesses so we want to maintain the strength of this weapon with high power and long range but we want to mitigate its high recoil and its slow rate of fire as much as we can so the reason behind the compensator here is that it's the recoil control um, again it's a later unlock so if you want to start out with the muzzle brake it'll stabilize the recoil which for those of you who don't know, recoil stabilization minimizes how much deviation there is left and right on the recoil, and recoil control is how much kick it has, how much it deviates vertically. So, in general, the problem that we have with the recoil in the FAL is that it vertically kicks really hard, so we're going to try and mod maximize recoil control. The marksman barrel we choose because it increases damage range. Again, this is the strength of this weapon is long range, so increasing that range gives us even better reach. Uh, maximizes our total damage for the weapon and it also as a bonus adds recoil control so a lot of these things are going to reduce our aim down sight speed that is a weakness of the weapon as well as how slow it aims down sights but the speed of ADS is really only an issue in close quarters engagements and we don't want to be using the FAL for that so we're prioritizing again recoil control so the uh, marksman barrel here has that recoil control option um, as opposed to these other ones. You could put in attachments to try and make this thing more effective at close range, but it's kind of defeating the purpose of the weapon. So we're playing to the strengths, and again, this is just my recommendations. You guys do what feels right to you. The under barrel, we use the Ranger foregrip, and the reason for this choice is with the semi-automatic uh, setup, the Ranger foregrip has recoil control and increased aiming stability. Um, you'll see when I'm using the burst, the burst fire perk that I will use a, a different attachment for the foregrip. Um, now there are a variety of options here and the reason that I choose this one, you could do the operator foregrip as well, which is re just pure recoil control. The aiming stability, there's not a whole lot of wobble and in general with most weapons I don't find that aiming stability is a major issue. Um, you're not really sniping with this weapon so you could opt to go with the operator foregrip instead of the ranger foregrip, that'd be just fine. Um, the other option, which I, spoiler, I use for the burst mode, is the Merc foregrip, which is one of my favorites because it adds recoil control as well as hip fire accuracy. With the single fire, without the burst fire mode for this, you're not going to get a lot of benefit from that, and so I, I just kind of recommend skipping it um, and going with either the Ranger foregrip, which is obviously the one I've cho chosen, or the Operator foregrip. The rear grip, we use the rubberized grip tape, again, recoil control. So we have maximized recoil control, which allows us faster follow-up shots. Again, the slow rate of fire that we're trying to compensate for and the high recoil, recoil control is going to help us keep that high recoil down so that we can get follow-up shots faster, which effectively increases our rate of fire. The 
Mini Reflex is my default for this weapon. When I started out, I wanted to use a uh, like the Scout Combat Optic or something with higher magnification because again, we are engaging at longer ranges. The problem with the magnified optics, optics on the FAL is they increase visible scope sway a lot and they increase visible recoil. So they make follow-up shots significantly slower, um, which is a huge detriment with this weapon. The GI Mini Reflex and the is the other one. Uh, Cronin LP945 Mini Reflex have the highest mobility of all optics. So one thing that this does do, in addition to it provides the least amount of magnification. So I guess in general you kind of have to have decent eyesight if you're engaging at long range, but I've never found that to be really much of a problem. Um, so it allows you to engage at longer ranges, be precise with the red dot sight, but it also has the maximum mobility. Even some of these other um, red dot kind of red dot sights, you can see that they take a hit on mobility as well. There's a lot of mobility hit on magnified ones, but for the non-magnified optics, um, the Solo Zero Mini Reflex is also a mag is one that you could use that doesn't have much, that has no impact on mobility. It increases your aim down sight speed, right? So, so one thing that this sight does is in, in addition to allowing faster follow-up shots and reduced visible recoil, it also gives you the fastest aim down sight speed of all the optics available without adding other attachments to gain that. So that's what I choose. Um, another option would be the flip-up uh, hybrid, which allows you to switch back and forth between a lower magnification optic and a higher magnification optic. I used that for a while, and basically whenever the match would stop or start, I would immediately flip down the magnified optic, and I would only pull it up if I needed it. But I found out over time that at long range, I could engage just as well with the GI Mini Reflex. Um, this one's my favorite, by the way, between the Mini Reflex, the GI, the Solo Zero, and the uh, 945, just because I like how little of the screen it takes up. Um, so that's my choice for an optic. Um, this would be the setup that I would go with. It would maximize our ability to engage distances. Um, as we talked about before with, uh, with the FAL, its weakness up close, especially when you're not using the burst fire attachment, is just, it's, it is not a close up weapon. So we will use the overkill perk when we're going for more of a slayer role. And you can use whatever close uh, quarters weapon you prefer. I would tend towards an SMG or a shotgun. Shotguns are, especially when you're, when you are gonna make sure that those engagements are at super close range, give you a near instant kill capacity. Um, SMGs, just give you a lot more versatility. I would tend more if you're gonna use overkill for a close-up perk that you're gonna tend more towards a shotgun than an SMG, but that's really kind of personal preference. I used SMGs heavily with this when I was doing overkill and they worked they worked just fine, and especially the SMGs even give you some medium range capability that the shotguns don't. Um, perk selection, uh, I'm gonna explain to you my perk selection. This isn't as critical for the FAL loadouts, but in some cases you will see it will be. Um, when I'm doing a Slayer roll, I like to use Quick Fix because as soon as I kill someone, it immediately starts health regen. I find that extremely valuable um, because if I get into multiple fights, it allows me to re-engage more quickly. You run into two or three people, Quick Fix is really valuable. Um, another option is Cold Blooded, just if you want to avoid kill streaks. Um, although I find when when you run into a team that has a lot of kill streaks, uh, you probably want to switch classes altogether. Um, I don't tend to focus these classes on using kill streaks, so I don't use kill kill chain. Um, that's why I recommend quick fix. Uh, also, obviously, overkill for the second weapon. Um, I like the amped perk for the Slayer mode because you want to switch back and forth very quickly between your close quarters weapon and your long range weapon. It allows you to, you know, more effectively engage enemies as you're moving through the map as opposed to an objective game mode where you might have a little bit more time to deliberate on changing weapons. Um, so that's a good option. Another option that I would use potentially is Battle Hardened. Um, this is a good one for a Slayer mode where when people are flashing you and stunning you that you're a little bit more resistant to that. Tracker could be another option, but I save that usually for my stealth class. Um, frag, wet, grenade, uh, lethal, lethal equipment is personal preference. Um, I tend towards grenades, um, so either a frag grenade or a Simtex when using a Slayer kit. C4 sometimes, but I find frags have a longer reach. Simtex is better when you're expecting to kind of have to panic and throw something quickly. Frag grenades work best when you're allowed to cook them so that you can place them exactly where you want them. 
Um, I tend towards using flash grenades as my tactical because they throw really quickly. I can do flat. I used to call them stun checks because stuns used to throw faster than flashes. Um, but now I think the they either throw about the same. I just find that in Modern Warfare, flashes are more effective. Um, you can throw them quickly. They blind the enemy. That's what I tend to use. So, so that's my assault kit. Um, objective kit, obviously we're going to be focusing on doing more of an objective game mode. Um, I totally put the wrong camo on. I like ridiculous camos for objective game modes. Um, I don't know why. I just love bright colors for objective game modes. So in this one, again, we're focusing on the you know semi-automatic setup. I'm still going with the compensator here. Um, sometimes I go with a suppressor for an objective mode just because if I'm capturing a point and I'm engaging people, I don't necessarily want to give away where I am. Um, but one of the things that you're acknowledging in the objective game modes is that you're going to basically be willing to sacrifice yourself to capture an objective so you're willing to die um, so stealth isn't as important so we got the compensator this is the same as the assault setup the marksman barrel the rubberized grip tape and the ranger foregrip same concept we're maximizing the strengths of this weapon um, for the secondary weapon again same concept something that works up close for this one again with objective i went with a silent shotgun again when I'm capturing an objective, I'm expecting most likely to be engaging people up close. So this gives me the option to keep my primary weapon more effective at longer ranges without the silencer. Um, although, depending on the silencer choice, it doesn't really impact, sometimes it positively impacts your long range performance. Um, decided to go with a uh, silent shotgun here. The perks for objective game modes, EOD, obviously you want reduced explosive damage because people are gonna be throwing grenades on the objective. Um, still using overkill here because we want to have that weapon to up close to help engage. And then shrapnel, the reason I like using this one is because it gives you two lethal grenades. And since I like using the Molotov cocktail, um, or alternatively you could use, the th use thermite. The reason I like the Molotov or the thermite is because they give you area denial, which means while you're capturing an objective, you can put the Molotov down and in say like a doorway, and that fire will discourage enemies from coming through that doorway while the fire is burning. So you can sometimes cover two or three entrances by placing down a couple of Molotovs and then watching the other entrances. So that's what I like for objective game modes. And then the smoke grenade, obviously, for capturing objectives, it's good to put smoke down on it and be able to capture it. So that's my kind of go-to setup for objective game modes. My stealth kit, I always like to have a stealth kit. This can work in objective and slayer game modes when it's better to stay off of the enemy's radar. This is just kind of a general feel for me. I, I sometimes really enjoy using the stealth setup um, as opposed to the assault setup just because it seems to give me the element of surprise more often and it's just, I think it's, I think it's a good tool to have and it's so valuable in fact that you could kind of cover most of the game modes between Assault or Objective. I always add Stealth in as an option, and I find that I use it quite a bit. So for, for a Stealth setup, the, ba the main difference is that it gives you a silencer. Um, that's a requirement. Kind of the requirement for me of my Stealth setup is Cold-Blooded Ghost and a silencer. This is to maximize you staying off the radar, you know, you not being tagged by uh, spotting grenades or snapshot grenades, kill streaks. This just allows you to kind of play the game in a more pure way, not worry as much about kill streaks, not worry about UAVs, and just get the jump on people. So same basic setup, the low magnification optic, marksman barrel, um, ranger foregrip, rubberized grip tape, and this time we're going with the monolithic suppressor. So why monolithic? Because it gives us an increase to our damage range. Some suppressors um, will actually decrease our damage range, like the lightweight suppressor, suppressor which depending on how you look at realistic use of suppressors you know if you use a subsonic ammunition to decrease total sound suppression then that's what happens but in the game they've got some nice options to give you some flexibility so when it comes to suppressors I like to use the monolithic suppressor because it gives an increase to your damage range um, it does slow down your ADS more but again with this weapon that's we're focused more on range and precise engagement as you're waiting to unlock the monolithic suppressor obviously for your stealth kit you know work your way up to what's available um, obviously I would prefer the tactical suppressor um, even over the lightweight suppressor just because we're not losing damage range um, this lightweight one not gonna hurt your aim down sight speed but it's gonna hurt your range again we don't want to weaken the strengths of the FAL so personal opinion um, so I will uh, for stealth again cold-blooded ghost I like to use tracker 
on my stealth kit. Battle Hardened would also be a good choice. Um, even Tune Up would be a good option. I love using Dead Silence, so in the stealth kit using Tune Up and getting Dead Silence more often can be really great for flanking. Not so much with the FAL, so Tracker I think is a decent option if you're going to be sneaking up and flanking. Although with the FAL, even Tracker may not be a great choice because you're not necessarily going to want to be close to people. So something like Battle Hardened or even Shrapnel might be a better choice for you in that in that role with the FAL. Um, again, personal choice here. Frag Grenades, if you want to be super, super sneaky, you know, you can do throwing knives for fun. But um, sometimes I will run C4 on my stealth kits just to kind of vary things up. If I'm going to be flanking, it may give me more options to kind of just play around and have fun. Um, frag grenades are kind of my default go-to. Um, same concept here, flash grenades for close engagement. Decoy grenades can be fun for stealth if you want to try and throw people off from where you are. You're not going to be making noise. You're not going to be showing up on the radar. So sometimes it can be helpful to make them look the wrong direction. Um, I don't find that the decoy grenade uh, provides me a huge advantage. Um, again, personal choice. So now I'm going to get into my two setups for um, using the burst fire attachment. And the first I'm calling my Wheezy kit, this would be my preferred setup. If I'm going to build the best kit that I can for the FAL, um, just in general, this is what I'm going with. So I'm going with the FAL with the burst fire attachment. And for those of you who've seen my gameplay videos, this really just makes the FAL an infinitely better weapon. It keeps you know, 90% of its long range accuracy, you can still engage all the way across the map with a three round burst with the FAL using this, especially when your other uh, attachments are recoil control. Um, so what I've done here is use the monolithic suppressor just because I prefer, and if I'm gonna choose to stay sneaky as much as possible, plus this increases the range. Um, the marksman barrel is increased range and recoil control. We're, we're getting less recoil control because we've taken off the rear grip. Um, and we, without the compensator, we're losing a bit of recoil control. Um, but with the burst fire attachment and this, I'm not planning on sniping. This is probably gonna be a little bit more close quarters for me. That's why I also use the Merc foregrip on this. Recoil control, again, but we're also increasing hip fire accuracy because we're no longer gonna be using a um, Oh, I didn't even set up the rest of the kit. We'll have to go do this as we go. Um, because we're not going to be using overkill with this, um, this makes our FAL our default close range weapon. And the burst fire is a is a one burst kill at close range, so it actually makes it reasonably effective. Um, secondary weapon, you know, weapon of choice, pistol, launcher. Uh, I tend to roll with a pistol as a secondary. Um, so for this, I, I, forgot, I think I forgot to set these up. So I would go with Quick Fix for my first perk on this for the same reason as the Assault Kit. Ghost, I run as my second perk just because I want to stay off the UAVs. UAVs are super common, so I want to not show up on people's radar as much as possible. And then for the secondary here, I'd probably take Battle Hardened. That's when I'm going around for kind of a Slayer mode, this is, this is what I would tend to use more often. Um, lethal is going to be my go-to as a Frag Grenade and then the Flash Grenade for my Tactical. That would be my go-to setup. Um, the other one, if for a kind of a pure, you know, maximum efficiency for the FAL in general, for, you know, the average user, I would go with basically the same setup. Um, again, I'm going with Burster, but I'm using the Compensator here for the increased recoil control. We're maximizing damage instead of stealthiness. Again, the Merc foregrip, Burst, Mini Reflex, Marksman Barrel. Um, I switched, I went ahead and put on my M19 secondary here. This is one of my favorite pistols for an emergency, you know, close range engagement just because of its high magazine capacity and high rate of fire, low recoil. Um, you could use something more more powerful like a 357 or uh, the Desert Eagle. But I find that they have such high recoil that if you're really in a panic mode, you don't want to have to measure your shots with a pistol. Um, obviously the new edition, the Renetti, when you unlock the burst fire attachment for it, um, what is it, Akimbo? And then I, I haven't even really messed with this. I've seen people using it. Um, maybe this doesn't have the burst fire that I thought. Uh, it has Akimbo. Anyway, whatever it is about this. Oh, there it is. The burst mart is it's a slide modification. So Akimbo and burst fire. Wow. Um, that's going to probably get rebalanced at some point. So I guess use it while you can. Uh, I like the M19. Did I say M13? Anyway, I like the M19. So this would be my kind of maximum efficiency setup. 
So yeah, those are the loadouts. Um, we will also cover game modes in here. Kill streaks. Um, this is just kind of my go-to generalized kill streak mode. At some point with some weapons, we may tend towards a lower kill streak selection, uh, depending on how we're going to play it. Um, but that doesn't necessarily apply here. So game modes. Um, I'll just kind of walk through them and give you my two cents on how effective I think it is. Um, team deathmatch I think is a great fit for uh, the FAL. Uh, you're focused on slaying. You can kind of control your engagement distance better because you're not pushing to an objective location. Um, team deathmatch and large team deathmatch games uh, are a good option for the FAL. I'm not a fan of cyber attack in general, and again, since it's an objective game mode, probably not playing to the strengths of the FAL because it tends more towards a closer engagement. As I showed, my objective class includes a secondary weapon for doing those close engagements. In that case, you're not really talking about the FAL if you want to maximize objective game modes. Maybe the FAL isn't your choice. If you do, overkill, a shotgun or an SMG as a secondary can work well. Um, domination. Domination is flexible. You can run the objective game mode kit that I described earlier and also still be able to control your engagements because domination is a objective game mode that is less focused um, as opposed to something like a hard point where, um, where there's a single objective that everybody is pushing to. So, um, so domination is a good choice for using the FAL. Um, search and destroy. I try to avoid talking about Search and Destroy in this because Search and Destroy is a very, I feel like a more competitive and serious game mode, so you don't necessarily want to take weapons that aren't suited to your best possible gameplay and force them into Search and Destroy, so we'll just kind of skip that for this purpose. Search and Destroy, you want to take your best to your best game kit. Um, headquarters, I don't really like Headquarters in general unless you're with an organized team. Would not recommend the FAL for Headquarters. Uh, free for All, not a good choice because you're going to probably get a lot of close range engagements. Um, Gunfight, again, a lot like Search and Destroy, more competitive game mode. Um, Hardpoint, you can make it work, but I wouldn't recommend it because, again, you're all being forced into a small area. Capture the Flag could be a good game mode for the FAL if you use a, as it a supported, use it in a supporting role. If you use it to kind of either defend a flag from a, from your flag from a position of advantage, or you use it to help defend people pursuing your flag carrier, Probably not a great choice if you're trying to actually attack the flag. Um, kill confirmed, much like Team Deathmatch, a great option. Um, well, not a great option. If you're going to use the FAL, this is one of the stronger modes for it. The FAL in general is not a great option for much of anything. Um, that really kind of covers all of the core game modes that I think you should probably deal with with the FAL. So um, that is my loadout recommendations and game mode recommendations. Watch the other videos if you want to see the actual tactics of how you use the weapon. Um, I think the tactics come first, loadouts come last. Once you, once you learn how to play to the strengths of the weapon, you use the attachments to augment uh, and enhance the strengths and try to mitigate the weaknesses of the weapon. And then choosing game modes is just about your own mental sanity, not trying to force this weapon into a place where it just does not belong. So. Hopefully you guys found that uh, interesting and enjoyable, and uh, I will talk to you guys in future videos. See ya.